Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the sale box for the sale beginning on the 28th of December 2011 on Steam. The sale runs until 10 p.m. GMT on the 29th of December 2011, thanks to the rollover system that's now currently available. So you do have quite a few hours in order to peruse and purchase. So, this is my guide to today's sale, including prices and personal recommendations. Take it as it is. First game on the list, here we go. Space Pirates and Zombies. Deep discount on this one at 75% off. That is $2.50, €2.24, £1.74. The UK guys get the best deal here. And two Aussie dollars 49 This game is a top-down, spacey kind of thing. It's a little... Odd. I mean, the best way, to, I suppose, to describe it would be a mixture of star control and the top-down shooter Starscape. It's an interesting metagame element to it in which you get hold of various blueprints in order to build different kinds of spacecraft. You move from planet to planet, sector to sector, and you get involved in various missions. There's also two factions to play off against. I actually voice acted in this game, I play the narrator, so that's a bit of a bias I suppose for me, but I did quite a few videos on this, I think I did at least three, possibly more, and you can check that out for full details of what this game actually entails. I enjoyed it an awful lot, and for that price I think it really is a must buy. It does have a lot of content within it, and it was developed by two people, if you can actually believe that. It's a fantastic looking space game, and it's got an awful lot to it. The combat does start off a little bit slow, but once you start getting the larger ships and actually get a fleet together, it gets an awful lot more interesting. Dungeon Defender, 75% off. That is $3.74, €2.99, £2.49, and three Aussie dollars 74 This game is absolutely worth the price. And once again, did a WTF is of this particular title with the developers, if you want a full look at what it is. It's effectively a third-person tower defense game in which you have a character that levels up and you can put points into various skills. It also has equipment, and you fight off wave after wave of enemies as well as using your class to construct class-specific defenses and tower Towers. It is a bunch of fun in co-op. I personally think that Orcs Must Die is a similar but better game in single player, but in terms of co-op, Orcs Must Die does not have that, and Dungeon Defenders does. It also has a full modding scene, which is always great and a lot of longevity there. So absolutely 110% recommend Dungeon Defenders, especially for that price. It's surprising to see it go on so cheap so soon after release, but yeah, yeah, definitely. Another game that I would probably get. This is actually a pretty good day in terms of games on the sale. Revenge of the Titans, 75% off. That is $2.50, €2.50, £1.74, and two Aussie dollars 50 This game is a retro-style tower defense game. It is a lot of fun. It's quite challenging. The only complaint that I have really about this is they made some massive sweeping changes after the game's release in which they removed some of the elements that I actually liked. Now, they made research free, which I think was a reasonable thing to do, considering it was almost impossible to beat that game when it initially came out because the balance between what you spent in the missions and what you were spending on research was absurd and you had no idea what you were going up against, so you had to keep restarting the game. But they also removed the element of recharging your towers by reloading them manually and also collecting income manually and I honestly think that that should have remained in there because it was fairly unique it's not something that most tower defense games have but they did remove that uh, so it's not as big a recommendation as it would have been in my personal opinion but it has a great style to it it's very challenging if you're looking for a tower defense game and you've perhaps exhausted defense grid or soul survivor then revenge of the titans is worth a look you can check out my first impressions of Revenge of the Titans as part of the Humble Indie Bundle WTF is that I did a while ago, and that pre-release version was part of that package. Another great co-op game, Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light, 75% off. In fact, all the Tomb Raider games are 75% off. The only one that I'd recommend with absolutely no hesitation is Guardian of Light, which is $3.74, €3.74, £2.49, and $3.74. This is an awesome co-op game. It's two-player co-op and uh, it's an isometric sort of dungeon crawler style thing. It's like mixing Diablo with Lara Croft Tomb Raider. It's very impressive, actually. It's an extremely good game. I was not expecting it to be as good as it was. There's some good puzzle solving as well as some good combat available in that title, although I really wouldn't play it unless you're playing with a friend. Thankfully, they did add internet co-op. That was not available on release, so if any of you have been hesitating buying it as a result of that, fear not, you can go for it. The rest of them I can't really comment on because I'm not a fan of Tomb Raider games, honestly, I really not. I don't like the three-dimensional platforming, and 
if you want to check out reviews of that, then I would suggest that you have a look at the reviews available over on Metacritic and just see what's there. And they're all rated fairly highly, honestly, but I personally couldn't care less, so I can't really give you a commentary on it. This really is going to be a day of, hey, buy everything, isn't it? And people are going to say, oh, well, you just endorse everything. That's not really true. It just happens to be a really good sales day. And you can check out my WTF is of Section 8 Prejudice, the next game, if you don't believe me. 75% off at 3 bucks 74 3 euros 24 2 pounds 49 or 3 Aussie dollars 74 As a multiplayer experience, this game is absolutely awesome. I'm a big fan of it, and I hate the fact that it didn't launch very well. I don't know why it didn't launch very well. Maybe it's because it uses games for Windows Live. Admittedly, I didn't find that intrusive at all. It had a great price point. It is a really good multiplayer game. In fact, I enjoyed this more than I did Battlefield 3 this year when it comes to multiplayer shooters. That I can tell you for a fact. We ran a server for the longest time, and... Nobody plays it. Why? Why don't you play it? For God's sake, pick it up for this price. It's even got a single-player campaign. It's not an amazing single-player campaign, but it's certainly good enough for the price that's being offered. And the multiplayer experience is something of a mixture between Battlefield and Tribes. Jetpacks are available. Vehicles are available. Plenty of call-ins. Some good tactical play there as well as loadout customization. It is a good, solid shooter. It really, really is. And it's got some very unique elements including a dynamic mission system that actually triggers during a match and changes your objectives on the fly, which is very, very nice indeed. That really shakes things up and also forces people to move around the map and not simply camp. There aren't all that many weapons, but there are a lot of modifications for those weapons, which do make them perform significantly differently. So I can kind of forgive them for that. There are also map packs available. This is what they released after the uh, game came out in order to support it, because it did come out very, very cheaply at $15. The map packs are also really cheap, so you might as well just pick up the whole lot. And you know what? We might relaunch the server, because I think we'll probably be shutting down our Battlefield servers at some point in the near future, because honestly, people seem to be getting sick of it, as am I. I think we'll open up our 40-player Prejudice server again because I really enjoyed playing on that. So, yeah, let's do that. That sounds like an idea. I'll give you details over the next few days. Hearts of Iron 3 collection, 75% off. So that's Hearts of Iron with Semper Fee and all of the other add-ons and such for that. $7.50, 7 euros 50. Odd to price it like that considering that Paradox is a European company, so the Euros are getting kind of screwed on that. £6.24 and dollars fifty. These are really hardcore games. They are extremely hardcore grand strategy. I think that if you know about grand strategy and you're actually interested in them, the chances are you already know about Hearts of Iron 3. And if you don't know about it, unless you're willing to take on something incredibly deep, thick, convoluted and challenging, then Hearts of Iron is probably not for you. It is a great series of games. Admittedly, 3 was bugged to hell, but they have fixed the majority of that since. But it is extremely complicated. Very hard to get into. The Serious Sam series. Okay, so the uh, discounts on this kind of vary. You've got 90% of the Serious Sam HD double pack. 3 bucks, 3 euros, 2 pounds, 19. 3 Aussie dollars. Without question. Absolutely. If you're looking for a classic brainless shooter experience serious sam hd double pack absolutely worthwhile serious sam double d 75 percent off did a wtf as of that you can go check it out two bucks two euros three pounds what <laughs> i don't know what the hell's going on there and two aussie dollars that's a definite buy in my opinion it's a really good 2d platformer with gun stacking a rather unique element serious sam the random encounter that's by flambier the guys who brought you super crate box that is one dollar twenty-four, ninety-nine euro cents, two quid. Once again, WTF, and one euro twenty-four. That's pretty fun. Uh, it's only a couple of hours of gameplay, but for that price, it's it's a definite pickup. Just to say, hey, this is kind of enjoyable. I can play it for an hour and think, hey, I just paid a uh, ninety-nine euro cents for this game, and you know what? I'm pretty okay with that. And then, of course, the big one, Serious Sam Three BFE, the recent release, fifty percent off, twenty bucks. 14 euros, 15 pounds, and 20 Aussie dollars. I have not been able to bring you a video of this game. The first one that I did was bad, so I just scrapped it. And then I've been having all sorts of frame rate issues that appear to be related to SLI configuration. There seems to be a patch coming out quite soon that might resolve that. But it's hard for me to really give you a recommendation on this game because I haven't been able to play it enough to firmly tell you whether or not it's good. What I played of it seemed pretty good. 
there was one level in the museum that I really despised, but that's nailed by most people as saying this is the worst level in the game. There is a big co-op mode with a lot of players as well as multiplayer available. Plenty of weapons. It's very much a classic shooter. There are secrets to find. There's a lot of weapons. There's a lot of enemies. For the most part, I found it enjoyable from what I played of it, but as I said, I haven't played enough of it to give you a full recommendation, and I did have technical problems with it, which is most likely just something on my system. You can also go and watch the Yogscast play it. They did a live stream of it, so perhaps that might give you some indication as to whether or not it's worth your time. Machinarium, 75% off, that's uh, $2.50, 1 euro 86, 1 pound 86, and uh, 2 euros 50. If you have any passing interest whatsoever in point and clicks, Machinarium or Machinarium, I never really know which one it is, by Aminata Design is amazing. It's got a fantastic art style. It's got a really great story. The puzzles are absolutely stellar. And you basically control this cutie robot, who is impossible not to adore, I have to say. Stella, Stella, Stella. Really, 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 really good. I don't even like point and clicks, and I enjoyed Machinery. It also has an amazing soundtrack, to the point where I actually have one of the limited edition signed LPs from that game on my shelf. I loved it that much that I picked one of those up. Definitely worth it. Two Worlds! Ah, God. <laughs> two Worlds and Two Worlds 2. These are both 66% off. $6.79, €6.79, £4.75, six Aussie dollars 79 for the first one. This is pretty much an avoid. It's not a particularly good game. It's also got some of the worst dialogue and voice acting I've ever heard. Forsooth the Taint is in fact mentioned. Ugh. Yeah, there are many, many better RPGs you could be playing. Two Worlds is probably not one you should be looking at. Two Worlds 2 is a little better. That's $10.19, £8.49, €10.19, and ten Aussie dollars 19 There's also an add-on called Pirates of the Flying Fortress. This is a fairly new one. This is, as I say, a better game than the original but I haven't had the chance to play it. I mean, really, do you think I've got the time to indulge in ridiculously large and long RPGs? Maybe worth a look at if you are looking for something along the lines of Risen, Gothic, and a little bit of Oblivion in there, and you haven't tried this one. It's, it's certainly not a bad game. It's just got issues. It really does. It's from Reality Pump, who have put out a number of games that I've noted as being pretty good but also have problems with 2160 being a prime example in that regard. There's also the castle defense game. I couldn't tell you anything about that. I haven't even tried it, so I couldn't give you a recommendation one way or the other. Dead Space and Dead Space 2, both 75% off, and the Americans will be rejoicing because they're both $5. The Europeans won't be. €3.74 for the first one, €7.49 for the second. UK guys get it for £3.74, and the second one for £5. The Aussies get completely boned on Dead Space 2 because they're going to be paying $17.50 for it for no apparent reason at all. The first one they're fine with because that's $3.74. Dead Space and Dead Space 2 are both great games. The PC ports are not ideal. Dead Space 2 seems to be a better one. If I recall correctly, there's an issue with V-Syncing. In fact, both games had it. I believe the original Dead Space had problems with... V-Sync because it caused a bunch of mouse latency, like there was actual mouse response lag. And the second one has some screen tearing with driver V-Sync running. So that's certainly a bit of a kick in the teeth. There are some stuttering issues there across the PC version. You may want to do a little bit of research on issues with these ports before you pick them up. They are both absolutely fantastic games. There's no real doubt about that. Survival horror in space some fairly original stuff going on there and of course some gruesome gruesome monsters and deaths however the pc versions are not all they could be so please do go and investigate the assassin's creed series 75 percent off most of them with the exception of brotherhood and revelations which are 66 and 25 percent respectively not really going to run through all the prices here because it would take a little bit too long. You can look at them yourselves, but I will just give you a recommendation in saying that the price for Assassin's Creed 2 Deluxe is by far the best deal of the lot. Assassin's Creed 2 is an absolutely fantastic game. I would, without question, highly recommend it. The PC version is really good, and please bear in mind that Ubisoft did remove the Always On DRM on all of these titles, so that's not something you really need to concern yourself with anymore. The original game was nowhere near as good as Assassin's Creed 2. There is so much more to do in Assassin's Creed 2, and if I had only one problem with the entire series, apart from how obviously pretentious it can get in places and confusing in terms of the storyline, is the fact that it's a bit easy. I mean, losing combat is nigh on impossible. 
in fact, you don't really play an assassin so much as you play a murderer's killing machine. It's not very difficult to take on entire armies on your own, which I am not a huge fan of. I would like it to be a little sneakier than it is. But it's still a great game nonetheless. Absolutely fantastic to explore the various cities. The character of Ezio is awesome, and all of the games do seem to have kept up the same degree of quality. Brotherhood has good multiplayer, but no one really plays it. Revelations has updated multiplayer, but of course it is the most expensive of the series, having only come out about a month or so ago. You can buy the entire Assassin's Creed pack, but it's not worth the price at all, honestly. You don't want to be playing the original. I would personally, if you've never played the series before, just pick up Assassin's Creed 2 and you will enjoy it. It's a good price for that. Five bucks, seven euros 49, so the euros do get a bit screwed. Three pounds 74 and seven Aussie dollars 50. Last but by every means least, I have to introduce to you Homefront, 75% off. That is $7.50, 4 euros 99, £7.50, and 12 Aussie dollars 49. This is an absolutely forgettable shooter with an incredibly bad single player game. I would not touch the single player with a 10 foot pole. I did once and I think I caught a disease. You can check out my WTFs of the single player and the multiplayer available on my channel. The multiplayer is significantly better honestly, than the single player, but that really wouldn't take much. I think that stabbing forks into my eyes is better than the single player. The single player is the most linear, scripted crap you can ever imagine with terrible gunplay and some fairly tenuous attempts at provoking emotion and morality that simply do not work. The multiplayer is a bit more interesting. It's kind of a battlefieldy style game with an interesting escalation in terms of the combat as you earn points to spend and summon vehicles and drones and various upgrades. It's definitely interesting, but I certainly wouldn't put it among the top tier shooters today. It's certainly not better than Battlefield 3. Hell, in my opinion, it's not even better than Modern Warfare 3, and I don't even like that game. And it's not even as good as Battlefield Bad Company 2, which you can pick up really cheap at the minute. So, nope on Homefront. Absolutely not a very bad game indeed, and a waste, an absolute waste of potential. All right, folks, before I go, one reminder. Any of you who are picking up or considering picking up Machinarium, Machinarium, whatever you want to call it, please bear in mind this is essentially a Flash game. Yeah, this was coded in Flash. It's still amazing, and just because it was coded in Flash doesn't mean you shouldn't buy it. It's like, oh, it was in Flash. It should be free. No, you nut jobs. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. Anyway, because it's a Flash game, the save files are saved in the Flash cache. Yes, I did just say that. The Flash cache. So do not clear your flash cache or run C cleaner because you will wipe your saved games. So there you go, a little bit of a warning there. Thank you very much for watching the sale box. Thank you to LTX over on the Reddit forums for compiling the useful table that was used in today's discussion. Thank you to Frank Lepaki for providing the music in the background. Yes, he is the guy that wrote Hellmarch. Go and check him out, franklepaki.com. And I'll see you next time.